Do you ever have those games in Football Manager where it just clicks? Everything goes right, every shot goes in. I had one of those games. We won 9 1. Yeah, it's going quite well this season. How's it going folks and welcome back to episode number 19 of Park to Prem here with FC United. Today we are back with a double header. We are going to be taking on York City at home, a team who have slipped down the league a little bit but are in and around the playoffs and then after that Chesterfield away. Chesterfield, one of only two teams currently ahead of us in the league table. Yes, a fair bit's happened since we last here. Six games played in the league. But before we talk about those, let's talk about some transfer stuff. Uh, A-OK, -okay, still isn't here. He arrives in a month. I've been counting down the days. It's like I'm waiting for Santa Claus to come with this man. I think he's going to be very good for us in goal. But I have continued to strengthen the team and we've picked up two new faces since we last here. The first of which was inspired by... Oh, last episode, really. We've got in a new left back, Josh DeBio, and he's 29 years old. He's brilliant, and I like him a lot. He has twisted his ankle and missed a lot of football, though, um, which is a tad bit unfortunate. He's only played three matches for us. To be fair, he didn't really shine in any of them, and as a result, I've started playing Ma Matthew Blake more at left back in his absence, who, by comparison, has assists and goals. I'll show you one of those goals in a moment. Elsewhere, Declan John, just to compare him, because of course he played the last game that you were here for against DeBio. You can see DeBio, not quite as good technically, but he is more of an athlete, better mentals, uh, slightly younger as well. Um, ultimately, they're both pretty good players for this level, but I just don't trust Declan John. There's something about the smile. It, it unnerves me. It feels evil. He wants to leave the club. He got sent off. I really don't want to have to play him this year unless I have to. And the other man we've signed is Oakley Cannoneer, which is just a fantastic name, can I say. Uh, 22 years old, this guy is a striker who can play in the wide areas. I am going to be training him to play centre attack in mid. Really, I brought him in to be back up to Maitland and to be back up uh, to Stephen Gold. Kind of be that third choice striker. Um, if we just quickly compare him to Maitland here, you can see Maitland a better rounded player on the whole, you'd have to say, um, if we just compare him really quickly to Joe Rodwell Grant. You can see here, Rodwell Grant, better in the air, slightly better attacking wise, but Oakley just way, way quicker, a better player physically. And I think at this level, against tiring defences late in games, throwing on a player like Oakley usually works out pretty well. Or at least that was the theory. That was until I actually started him in a game and he played incredibly and suddenly Maitland's on the bench and Oakley is the starter. Three goals, three assists, a 7.60 rating playing as a striker for us. I have been very impressed with what this man has offered. Um, yeah, not bad for a free transfer. Picked up after he was released by Queen's Park Rangers in the summer. So let's talk about the matches since you were last here. We have played six and a few clean sheets, a few wins. Things have slowed down a little bit though. We are yet to win in the month of September. We kicked things off with back-to-back 2-0 -back wins. The first was against Weymouth. Uh, you can see here Juffy, D Juffy, Duffy and Blake <laughs> with the goals. Maybe we should just call Joe Duffy, Juffy. That's not going to catch on, is it? Um, he's been very good as well. Six goals in seven games for him as a centre attacking mid is sensational. I talked about Matthew Blake and a goal. Let's go watch this goal. A pretty crazy free kick this from the left back. It came runner up in goal of the month. I think it should have won. Free kick from range into the top bins. Keeper had no chance. Yeah, not a bad way to secure a win. Um, two late goals. Probably should have won it a little sooner. The next game we had was against Eastleigh. This one, by comparison, more comfortable. An early Stephen Gold penalty saw us on our merry way. We then drew against Yeovil Town, which on the face of it is not a bad result. Yeovil are right up there towards the top of the table. However, um, they had a sending off after 21 minutes. So they played 70 minutes plus added time down a man and we just couldn't find a breakthrough. And then they equalized in the 89th minute. And I'll be honest, I got very upset. I was very salty. I'm definitely over it. I'm not still mad. Right, move move on. And move on, we shall, to the game against Fylde. The, the game that I showed in the intro, 9-1. Um, three players got 10.0 ratings. Crow got four assists from right back. For anyone who thought Dylan Crow you know, maybe it was a set piece merchant or maybe he wasn't going to be able to step up with us. So far, he is defying the critics. He's got five assists in seven. Yeah, at this point, I'm convinced he's just going to be our right back in the Premier League, to be honest, in 10 years time. Elsewhere in this game, though, really convincing performance. Golden Cannoneer kind of pairing up um, as that pacey and tall kind of striker combo. As you can see, Maitland was on the bench for this game. Cannoneer had come on off the bench. I decided to give him a go just to see what he was capable of. 
and he looked sensational in this game and he started every game since. Duffy picking up that hat-trick from centre attack in mid and also little shout out to Ibrahim, got his first goal for the club and then after he scored that goal, he went off on international duty for Sudan and wasn't available for a couple of games, which was annoying, but the fact he's playing for Sudan is pretty cool and at 18 years old, he started his time here at Freebridges. <laughs> I can't believe I've just done that. He started his time here at FC United very well. It, it, did anyone have 16 episodes before I'd say three bridges instead of FC United? If you had that prediction, you've won it. Right, move on. What team am I managing? Anyway, into the month of September we've gone, unfortunately, not great results. We drew 0-0 against Dagenham, which having scored nine goals in the previous game, you'd like to think we'd keep that going. We didn't. And then in our most recent game, we took on Hartlepool. We lost this one 3-2. It was a good little game. We took the lead in it via Quanza. Cannonier then got us back into the game, but Kessa scored in the 64th minute. That ended up being the winner. Wasn't a great performance by us. Probably didn't deserve to win it. I can't even claim that we were hard done by, to be honest. Um, I want to also claim, well, Hartlepool are good. You know, they're, they're towards the top of the table. They're not. They're in 10th. We should have won this game. I'm kind of upset. But let's look at the positives. When it comes to player stats, top goal scorer were dominating. Average ratings, there's lots of FC United faces here too. And in terms of assists, it's, that, it's the man that you, we all know it's going to be. Dylan Crow, five assists so far this year. He's doing very well. Cannonier, three assists to his name as well. He has been really, really good since he's come into the team. I think he could end up looking like a super inspired signing. But anyway, we've got two matches to get in today. So let's get into the first one. We are taking on York City at home. Um, this is the team that we're going to go with. We are juggling a few injuries at the moment. Uh, Debayo, who would start left back, is currently out injured, as we've already talked about. Elsewhere, Wallace is out injured. Lennon and Yannick Azaikunu also out injured. So a little bit depleted at the back. We don't have many fit centre-back options. So hopefully, Quanza and Terry are going to be well behaved. Um, something that someone pointed out in the comments of yesterday's video is Frankie Terry, and I think this is correct, is the nephew of John Terry. Turns out that when I misspoke last time and compared him to John Terry, that they probably are quite similar. Genetically, high likelihood that they have some of the same genes. They've got the same defensive bones in their body. Um, he's done okay so far. 7.44 rating. Um, I still want to sign him. I feel like every episode, I'm just going to have to announce the fact that I still want to sign Terry to play centre-back. That is until, of course, he doesn't play well for a couple of games. Elsewhere in the team, though, a little bit of rotation here. Cabazuto has dropped down to the bench, and that has allowed Fakini to come into the team. Um, been really, really impressed with this man at 20 years old. Um, super creative. Played the box-to-box -box midfielder role for us, which I feel like when you look at him, you might feel like he's not really that kind of player. But ultimately, at this level... For a player to have kind of seven, eight or nine in certain attributes, especially for a role like box-to-box -box midfielder where it uses a load of attributes, it's kind of par for the course. He has the physicals to get up and down the pitch. He has the work rate. He's got the stamina. Super creative. That's where he's going to play for us today. And up top for now, I'm staking with Cannonier. I'm sorry, Maitland, my little mate. You've not scored. You started four games, did nothing. Your replacements come in. It was meant to be your backup and he's just better than you. So uh, yeah, sit on the bench. Think about what you've done. I feel like maybe if we just bench him and bring him on, I don't know, he'll have a fire in his belly to play better today. So of the two games today, this is the winnable one. This is the one that I'm marking down and saying, yes, we should be doing well in. And while we could have an early chance, Cannonier, Cannonier's it off the crossbar. That was a really good chance to score. Would Maitland have scored it? We will never know. Um, but the man who I've started to put a lot of faith in, and I don't know if you can tell I'm a bit of a fan of him, he has missed a chance there that he probably should score. But we're not going to judge him yet. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. The cannons don't fire. First time every time. That's not an expression. I'm just making it up. He's going to get another chance and he's going to repay my faith in him by blasting it straight at the goalkeeper. We could be 2-0 up in this game in under five minutes. Instead, I just feel like a mug. Why, why have I not played Maitland? Blake whips in. Quanza can't get there. Crow, Cannoneer. He's on the ball again. Everything's going through him. Shot from range. Crow, wide of the post. So 20 minutes into this game, we are dominant. We've only had 51% of the ball, but all the shots are going our way. Unfortunately, we've got nothing to show for it yet. And I say yet because I want to believe that there is a goal coming sooner rather than later. Duffy, big searching ball. Cannoneer stretches his legs. He's quick. He's missed three one-on-ones. He's actually... Is, is he Jack Dowdy in disguise? Can we have an investigation? Do they share the same attacking genes as one another? The one that means they can't finish. I mean, look, Stephen Gold's good, isn't he? Dylan Crowe's got the assist. Just kick it to the tall striker at the near post. Who needs to play sexy football? Um, look, we're going to take it. We probably should be a goal or two more up than we are. But in the end, 
They all count. It's whipped in. Steve Gold leaps like a salmon, heads like a seal. Do seals head balls? Well, it's gone in the top corner. We're in the lead. Relax. And just looking at the league table, Chesterfield have gone top. We are in second. Our next game's against Chesterfield. That could be a really feisty game towards the top of the table if things stay as they are. Of course, Borumwood were top of the league. And of course, we still have to win our game, which we're now not doing because Moss, with what I think is York's first chance on goal, has just scored to make it 1-1. And it all came from a throw-in that we didn't really defend well. It was headed away by Matthew Blake, but straight into danger. Jude Boyd kept it alive. Ashworth whipped it in. And then Terry kind of just wasn't Terry good in that situation. Ball goes over his head. They've scored. Probably deserved to concede because of that pun. And I was about to say, we're going to go in at the break all level, but there's another highlight. Hold the phone, everyone. Don't hang up just yet. Butterworth whipping it goalwards. Straight down Whiteley's throat. Yeah, very easy for the keeper to collect. Speaking of Butterworth, by the way, was great for us last year. Zero goals, zero assists so far this year in seven games. There's going to come a point where I have to drop him. Maybe I need to start playing Maitland at centre mid on attack. He can play there, just as a reminder, as a centre mid. Might not even be the most mental idea I've ever had. But I, I kind of want to keep faith in Butterworth. There's, I don't know, there's something about him. I think it's his smile. Cannoneer, please score this one. He's offside. He's offside, he's offside, right? Why? Let's not celebrate it. The one time where he actually finishes it and the flag's raised. I don't even want to watch the disallowed goal. Take me to half time. At the break, 1-1. One, one. They've had one shot on target. It went in. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I, I feel like I'm more animated today than usual. I feel like the 9-1 result a couple, well, I was going to say a couple of games ago. It was a couple of games ago. It's like half an hour ago. I'm still riding off the high of that. Unfortunately, our players are doing anything but that. We've not won yet this month. We started the season so well. We were top of the league and had way better goal difference than everyone else. And in the last couple of game weeks, not really looked good enough. We've looked a little susceptible at the back. Hopefully, this second half is going to be an inspired turnaround. I say that. We've played really well. We don't really need to turn anything around besides the scoreline. We just need Cannoneer to score. He's one-on-one. -on -one. He's, he's missed, is that four? Is that, I'm, I'm running out of fingers to count on. I do have two hands though. So we've got a few more that he can miss yet. Okay, Crow from the corner. We've already scored one of these. We're going to score another one of them. Stephen Gold is just bloody good, isn't he? He's just bloody good. He's just taller than everyone else. I'm really annoyed about Cannoneer missing to the point where I'm now thinking, should I just take him off out of spite? Dylan Crow whips it in. Gold is just unmarked. In fact, who was marking him there at the near post? It was Ashworth for them. Not sure why they have their right back on the near post. He has 12 jumping reach and 179 centimetres of height. And by comparison, I mean, Stephen Gold has better jumping reach. His height is significantly higher. It's just a recipe for disaster for them. You can't not mark with a tall player um, a guy like Stephen Gold. You just have to put your tallest player on him and let them deal with it. The AI hasn't figured that out. York City haven't figured that out. It's cost them. But of course, what, with 33 minutes left, I could really do with another goal. I could really do with another goal just to help me chillax a little bit. What's that phrase? Chill your beans? I need to, my beans need chilling. Stick them in the fridge. Bikini to Duffy. He's now bringing it out. Turns his man really well, actually, Duffy, at centre attack in mid there. He is going to bring it forward all the way down the line. Options in the middle. Cannoneer is one. I mean, Stephen Gold heads that in for a hat trick. It's landed on the wrong man's head. You know what? I've seen enough. I'm taking him off. Maitland on. Cannoneer off. Apparently, Cannoneer is having a good game. No, he's not. No, he's not, football manager. Don't lie to me. Of course, now Maitland will probably come on get sent off or something mad just to further rub salt in the wound. Oh, we've got a chance here. Duffy bursting from centre attacking mid. One on one. We could have won this one 9-1, I feel like. Does anyone else feel like this is one of those bad days? I mean, Gold's there. Maitland's across. He should just cross it. Will he? Will he? He's thinking about it. He goes to Duffy. To Jones. Bikini now with it. The Italian stallion. Wide to Crow. He could get the ball into the box here. He does. Duffy heads over. We've had so many chances and it's only 2-1 and I'm just concerned they're going to go, go up the other end and score. Seven minutes left, still 2-1. I'm scared. <laughs> I shouldn't be scared. We've been so good in this game, but it just feels like we are a team where we are capable of making that mistake and screwing up. We need another goal, really. York, by the way, not created anything in this half. 
I know sometimes people think I like edit out the highlights of the other team or even sometimes my own team to cut down the video length. They have created nothing this game. The editing is not deceiving you. In fact, they've still only had one shot on target. It's been, it's been that kind of game. We've missed another one on one there. I think it was Maitland that time. Could still have a corner, which at this point we have a, a better conversion rate from corners than we do one on ones, which I mean, that does speak volumes about our team. Maitland's through. He's hit the woodwork. He was offside. It wouldn't have counted. Still 2-1. I say he's still 2-1. Then another highlight begins. What is happening this season? I feel like this has been a very entertaining match just because it's my slow descent into insanity being documented on the internet. Gold, Duffy, Maitland. It's some lovely build-up play. Stevie Gold's in the middle. Just put it on his head. Dink it to him, Maitland. Or, or give it to Blake. Jones, bang that. Bang that. He hits the crossbar. I, I love the Jones special long shots. Quantz has just murdered a man on the halfway line. Oh, I thought Jones was about to score the goal that was going to help me relax. But alas, didn't go in, hit the crossbar. And now I'm just looking at the top left thinking, I'm fine with no more highlights. We'll end the game there. 2-1. We've won it. Doesn't feel like a win. Uh, Cannoneer got a 7.2, which just feels like he's taking the Michael really with that rating. Uh, everyone played well except for Keeney and Harker. I mean, Harker literally didn't have a save to make other than when he conceded. So... Yeah, not really his fault. He's on a 6.8, to be honest. In another game, I think our finishing there really could have cost us, but we managed to just about scrape through. I'm hoping we're not going to be scraping through the next one. We've got Chesterfield in a matter of days' time. It's going to be first versus second. I'm excited for it. I'll see you guys in a mo, where hopefully we're going to go top of the league. That, that's the plan. Okay, so I'm a little bit annoyed because we had this beautiful top of the table clash, didn't we? Ourselves and Chesterfield, first and a second, and then Dagenham played. On Friday, I say Dagenham, it's Dagenham and Redbridge. I'm sorry to the people of Redbridge, you are probably offended. I'm just ignoring them from the team name. Look, they've gone top of the league and it's ruined everything because they played a day earlier. I'm still going to claim this is the top of the table clash because no matter what, win, draw, lose, Dagenham aren't going to be top after the game. Um, yeah, we all have a chance to catch them and go above them. I'm going to hope that we can get what is probably a slightly unlikely away win. Um, if we just take a look at things before we get into this game, um, in terms of board expectation for this year, the expectation is to avoid relegation and then become an established Vanarama National League team. Of course, I'm looking way beyond that. Um, if we look at the season preview, predicted to finish eighth, Chesterfield currently in second, predicted to finish second. So we probably go into this game as underdogs, but I do feel like with the quality that we've got, especially when you consider we beat Fylde 9-1, we have to back ourselves to get goals and, well, get chances to at least win this game. Uh, I think a lot of it is going to hinge on can we play better than we did last game when it came to the one-on-ones. Uh, I mentioned Butterworth not really showing up this year, of course, playing as a centre mid on attack. Recently signed a new contract. feel like the game has shafted me there. I've given him a new deal and now he's just decided to stop playing. Um, I mentioned kind of jokingly <laughs> last game about maybe putting Maitland in as the centre mid on attack. I'll be honest... It's, it probably wouldn't be the craziest thing I've ever done. If we just compare the two players as centre mids on attack here, you can see, of course, Maitland is a lot more one-dimensional, but he probably is a little bit better going forward, and he is a little bit quicker to make bursting runs from deep. However, despite saying all of that, for this game, I'm just going to go with the same team that played the previous match. Now, I know we only won it 2-1. Probably should have been a few more. If we have our shooting boots on today, I don't see any reason why we can't win this game quite handsomely. But let's get into this one. More nervous for this game than the previous one. However, just getting the win against York has eased the nerve slightly. I really want to believe that we could win the league this year or at least compete at the very top. And of course, it's easy to say that eight games into the year. We've played against a few of the teams in and around us. This is the first time I feel like we're going to be truly tested as a side. Um, Chesterfield, a good team, a team that I do think we're capable of winning. I'm conscious of the fact they're playing kind of a five at the back. I feel like that might limit our attacking uh, play just a tiny bit, but well, I will hope that we're going to be wrong as we might have a chance here. Jones, oh my word. He's gone for like the Decanio scissor kick there from range. It was going for the top corner as well before the keeper got a mighty big hand to it. Might still have a chance from the corner and well, Gold's header, all 15 of that heading, got the ball just wide of the post. Not far wide at all though. We've started this game well and we're going to have another chance here. Crow's going to whip it in. Gold can't quite get there. Hughes heads it away from danger, at least for now, but not fully away from danger. Crow over the ball, back to Butterworth. Options queuing up in the middle. 
I did away once, and now maybe, just maybe, Chestfield going to look to build it out from the back. Bolton, forward to Hughes. He's got a man on his overlap. It's Bolton continuing that run forward. Few players getting into the penalty area for Chesterfield here. We need to be wary. Bolton has gone on a crazy run. He plays it across, and while Phillips cannons that shot against the crossbar, probably should have scored from there, to be honest. Straight into another highlight, we go in straight into another highlight where we do not have possession. Turns out you can't create chances in football if you don't have the ball. Well, right now we are struggling a little bit, it would seem. That said, we are going to force them to go all the way back to the keeper who's going to look to switch the play over to Bolton on the far side again. But on this occasion, we've come away from it with the ball. And Cannonier is, well, one-on-one. -on -one. Defender did get back ahead of him, but he should have hit the target at the very least there. The shot over the bar is frustrating, but we've got to shake that off. We've got to go again here. Jones, players surging ahead of him, and he's just he's just picked the wrong option there, hasn't he? That, was, that wasn't the play. Bolton again with the ball on this far side. Chesterfield using him a lot. I feel like Matthew Blake at left back today is getting a, a bit of a run around from him so far in this game. Well, speaking of the devil, he's there with the ball again inside this time to Bradbrook. For all the possession Chesterfield have had, they are well, yet to have a shot on target in this game over halfway through the first half. We might need to do some defending here because they are going to have their first shot on target. And much like the last game, we're going to concede from the first shot on target. A really good finish actually by Phillips. Kind of threw him under the bus a little bit for his miss earlier on. We were warned. We didn't heed those warnings. And in the end, he has punished us. And it was relatively simple in the end. He gets behind Quantzer. The finish is cheeky. It's into the bottom key corner. Dinked over the keeper. And uh, we're a goal down. It's not good. Crow on the near side, though. Let's not get too discouraged just yet. We've created chances. We just need to score some chances. We had this problem last game. And for a second, I thought we were going to eradicate the problem for now. But again, Gold gets his header on it. And again, he's missed the target. Last game, he was on target with those. Today, he's had two chances. You'd back him to score. Squandered both of them. And we are rapidly now approaching half time. But we might still have another chance here. Ball whipped in. Quant to get his head on it. Gold, I think, has hit the post twice. And then a free kick's awarded. I think it would have been offside anyway. But we're ending the chance, or ending the half, I should say, with a chance. Unfortunately... We're going to be a goal down here. A bit annoyed with what I've seen so far because I think we've been the better team. Just going to tell the players they've been terrible and to sort it out and hope that in the second half they can and will step up. We have played, well, coming up to an hour gone here though and we're going to need to score at some point if we want anything from this game. We might have a chance here. We do have a chance here. It's that man that you expect to come in with a headed plan. Jarrell Quantzer. And Crow has just put it on his forehead yet again. Ball whipped in. Quanza leaps like a salmon, stings like a bee, hits the crossbar, but it doesn't matter. It's going to get across the line. And well, I don't like the fact that we've been so reliant on the set pieces today because we've been so wasteful from open play. But at the end of the day, we built a team that is capable of well having set piece goals scored a plenty, and we are doing that right here and now. Of course, with that said, we still need to be able to do some defending from open play. We can't just rely on set pieces entirely. Hughes plays it across to Rowley, who turns his man. And Hughes is going to end up putting it in the back of the net. I think that was a, a crazy turn, actually, by the attacker there to find the space. And we were ahead, or not ahead, we were back in the game for about two minutes. Um, yeah, not great. We're down. We've got to do it all over again. Blake put in an initial tackle that was good, but Hughes plays it here. And it was Rowley's turn completely does Crow, who, I mean, we can talk about his set piece, we can talk about his delivery, he does also need to be able to defend, not covered himself in glory right there, and uh, you know what, 67 minutes gone, it's time for changes, Cannonier not played very well in today's episode, I feel like I bigged him up a load and he's massively let me down, um, elsewhere, Cabazuto's not the best of games, so I'm going to take him off, I'm going to bring in Ibrahim, the Sudanese youngster to play box-to-box -box midfielder, and move Jones into the more defensive role for what remains here. We might even get a chance, though. Cannonier getting in behind. I mean, I've just told him that he's coming off. And, uh, well, he's not going to score before he goes off. Get off the pitch, lad. You've been awful today. Um, we're going to make the subs. We've got 20 minutes left here. Our XG is 2.01, and yet we've only got one goal. Our XG has been better. Our chances have been better. Our finishing has not been better. We need to get the ball forward. A little bit quicker this time, don't we? Going to tell the players to press more, engage higher up the pitch. Not long left, really, to try and turn this around. 
We're 15 minutes left. We're going to try and make it happen. Gold tries to play it forward to Duffy, who well, couldn't get on the end of it. He's not quick enough the center attack in mid to get there. I'm not sure Usain Bolt would have been quick enough, to be honest. Duffy with the ball now. Now to Ibrahim, who's on off the bench, and that's why he's on the bench. That pass was absolutely awful. And well, we could be caught out here, of course. Committing men forward now, pushing higher up the pitch. We are going to leave ourselves susceptible at the back. And while well, Bolton is going to try and maybe punish us once more here. It's played forward. Rowley looked offside, but Quanta did really well, actually, to head that back to the goalkeeper. Some super intelligent defending by him. Ball played forward. Gold nods it on. It's through with Maitland. Can he take it round the keeper and score? He can. The flag's going to stay down. It's taken him a while to get his first goal at this level, Maitland. He had a very good season last year, but finally, finally, he's off the mark. We've chucked him on off the bench in both these games here. He had chances in the previous one. This time, he's taken a chance that could prove crucial. Great little touch to take the angle wide and find the space at the near post of the goalkeeper. With 15 minutes left, though, I kind of want to stay on the front foot here. I think we're capable of winning this game. Butterworth. Plays it short, crossed in, and oh my word, we are capable of winning this game. It's Matthew Blake, the left back, with a crazy, crazy ball from, well, miles away, really. And he's just spotted Stephen Gold at the back post. Picked him out. Complete height mismatch, a mismatch there. That's a mouthful. Um, but the header finds it to the top corner. And from 2 1 down to 3 2 up. And now, you know, you know what? We are going to slow down the game a little bit. We are just going to play it out from the back. We don't need to press as high. We can drop a little deeper. Slow the play down. Out of defence. No nonsense here. We've been the better team. Our XG is so much better than theirs. We've had so much more of the ball. We just have to get across the line. And of course, now our highlight begins. It's the 88th minute. Don't do it to me, football manager. Ball put, put to the near post, or rather the far post. But Quanta gets it away. It's now Miller with it. He's going to play it forward to Phillips. Players queuing up in the middle, but Quanta gets it away from danger, but only as far as Maguire. Miller, yet again, bring it down the far side. He crosses it to Hughes, and it's nodded down to Rowley. And now it's 3-3. Free, free. I'll tell you what, the games this season have been absolutely bananas, haven't they? <laughs> Let's be honest, we've had some crazy games of football. Now I'm just undoing all the changes that I just did. Bit annoying, bit annoying, I'll be honest, but... Maybe that's what I get for time wasting. Maybe that's what I get for trying to kill off the game and manage it. I realise I did still have the mentality on attacking, but I didn't really want to take our foot off the gas. I didn't want to well, alleviate the pressure too much, just at least going forward. I mean, I don't want to say it, but I just feel like there's another goal in this game. I hope it's going to be for us. I kind of hope I'm wrong and it's just a nice, boring end. There's five minutes left. There is another highlight. I just had a feeling... There's four minutes left. We're more and more attacking. We are pressing once more. We want to get another goal here in this six-goal thriller. Is there a seventh goal coming from somewhere? Chesterfield, we're behind. They've come back. We've been behind and come back. Is a team about to snatch a late winner? It's Chesterfield in possession. Rowley played through. He just scored one. This time, Harker is going to stand up tall and be countered. Great save by the keeper. I'm going to shout demand more. And there is another highlight. A KK with the ball in. Headed away from danger. Still wide though. I don't like this. I don't like this. Crow gets it away from danger. I'll take the draw. I've changed my mind, football manager. There's, a, there's another highlight. There's an, I thought the ball was going to go out of play there and the game was just going to end. It's not happening that way. Phillips plays it forward. Terry plays it back to Harker. I want to believe that we could get something here. Gold wins his header, but... Maitland alongside him just looks very, very lazy and lethargic with his uh, intensity to press. Chesterfield in possession. Ball played forward to Phillips. Quants, though, nods it down to Duffy. Gold with the ball. Dinks it towards Maitland. He can't quite get there. Pro now with the ball on the far side. He plays it to Ibrahim. Duffy. Wide to Crow. Four players in the middle. Gold is one of them. And that might be the chance. That might be the opportunity that we thought we had. But, and I can't believe I'm saying this, we are going into a third highlight in five minutes. Oh my word, and Rowdy's now bringing the ball forward for them. I don't know if I, my heart can handle this if it keeps going like this, ladies and gentlemen. They're on the attack again. Rowley with the ball. He's offside. Just end the game. End the, I'll take the draw. Well, just to check, we're not on full match by accident here. No, we're still on key highlights. There's 30 seconds left. We can just end the game now. I feel like football managers just tormenting me and nothing's going to happen. 
maybe I'm saying that more out of hope than expectation. Ponta heads it away. Just anywhere but around the back. Don't really like this. Just away from danger. There's 10 seconds left. I'll, I'll take I'll take the draw. They're through again. Phillips Hughes, he's very wide. Gives it back to Beverland, who's in the oh, a dangerous area. It's whipped back post. Crowley's going to get it away. <sighs> Breathe, everyone. Breathe. It's finished free free here. I'm exhausted. And with that crazy, crazy result, we both climb up the table. Chesterfield moved top. We are now in second ahead of Dagenham on goal difference. Um, I should be happy with a draw. And to be honest, a draw was probably fair on the day. But having been ahead at 3-2 with not long left, that is the kind of game you want to hold on and win, isn't it, really? Okay, I can't promise you matches like today's matches and yesterday's matches next week. But we'll try and do our best to match the intensity. It's been absolutely bonkers. I feel like I've earned two days off. Of course, we will be back on Monday with more Park to Prem action. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. If you have, do drop a like on it. That genuinely is uh, really, really appreciated. The likes on the series have consistently been above a thousand a video. Let's see if we can maybe push towards, I don't know, 1,500 today. I've got faith in you. Go out there and make the difference. I'm now just quoting Football Manager randomly. Let's end things here. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys on Monday for more. Until then, I'm going to go lay down. I think I've earned a nap. I'll see you next time. <laughs> I'm out. Blimey. That was, that was intense, wasn't it?